Hey y'all, I'm Marty. These are my musings. Let's get rolling. The board game hobby has experienced a lot of growth over the past several years, which means a lot of publishers have also experienced some good growth. One great example of that is Games Workshop. This company that was established in 1975 had a sales growth of 39% over the past fiscal year. In addition, their earnings were up. 34%. In fact, this windfall in profits has led them to give a bonus to every single one of their employees, averaging up to around $4,000 per employee. And while the hobby has been growing over the past several years, and you may think that, well, maybe Games Workshop was just riding that wave, there's been a lot of other things that's been going on in the past several years with them that's helped create a new profitable company. This growth spurt started happening back in 2015 when Kevin Roundtree took over as CEO. When he came in, Games Workshop was viewed as a faceless company that was having slow or declining sales and stores closing all over the world. But since then, he's made a lot of changes trying to make Games Workshop more customer friendly. For example, I mentioned how Games Workshop was faceless. It was like this organization, but you didn't know who to talk to. You didn't know who was running it. But since then, they have created a community website, which is updated almost daily with articles from people that are in the company. They have weekly podcast going on this talks about some of their games such as Age of Sigmar. They have a Twitch channel where every week they are broadcasting gameplays and interviews and telling about upcoming products. So they're constantly now trying to get in front of people's eyes through the website Twitch, etc. But they've also changed their business plan. Used to, people got very frustrated with Games Workshop and their pricing policies. Their games were very expensive. The models were expensive. Well, since Kevin came in, he's changed their pricing structure to try to make their games more accessible to customers so they're not so expensive anymore and makes the games easier to play and get into. In addition, they have re-released a lot of their core products and they have been well received within the community, with probably the most popular being Warhammer 40 K the 8th edition. Up until then, a lot of players had issues with the 7th edition and how complicated the rules were, and, and people were falling away from that product, and in fact, jumping to other games such as well, a War Machine, which actually for a little while was doing better in sales than what Warhammer 40K was. But since 8th edition, the rules have been streamlined, people have come back in droves to this game, and now at this point, it's actually more popular than what War Machine was. They've also introduced Age of Sigmar, which takes place in their fantasy universe, and they They've just now released Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition. And in fact, a little plug here, if you want to find out more about Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition, go check out our podcast, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, episode 147, where myself and my son take a look at it and tell you whether it might be a good purchase for you or not. But aside from their core products, such as 40K, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, they've introduced new products such as Shade Spire, which has been very popular, and a lot of other board games. In addition, they've embraced licensing of their IP. They've given over some of their IPs to other companies to make dice games, board games, role-playing games, and they've also licensed their IPs over to video game companies. And if you go look on Steam right now, you'll find lots of games based in the 40K universe that are currently out or in development. In fact, it's licensing of this IP which has helped in their profitability. 10 million of their 74 million pounds in earnings came from licensing their IP. It's pretty darn good. Now, personally, I'm very pleased with the direction Games Workshop has taken. It's true, they used to be somewhat faceless. You, you didn't see a lot from them except maybe on their main website. They didn't have YouTube channels or Twitch channels. I didn't know who to talk to or contact. But since then, they've been proactively reaching out to the community and working with content creators and people who write blogs and make podcasts and videos trying to get their products in front of as many people as possible. In fact, last year, I got a chance to demo Shadespire early on. I talked to a Games Workshop representative at Gen Con, and they are still currently in contact with us when they come out with brand new products. So I'm very pleased with the direction they've taken, and I can totally understand why this company continues to grow year over year. For my next couple stories, I'm going to be following up on some stories I did in previous episodes. The first is on comics. I had talked about how the sale of comics have been declining over the past several years. Well, it looks like that several of these comic book companies and distributors are realizing, you know what? 
we need to try to do a better job of marketing and selling ourselves to try to boost sales. It is just announced recently that GameStop is going to experiment with carrying comic books in their stores. Now, this is kind of a twofold thing. GameStop has been losing sales in video games because so many games are now available by digital download. So GameStop has been trying to get into collectible items and other types of merchandise in order to try to boost sales. So one of the things they're going to try to do is try to do it now through comic books, and I'm sure that the comic book retail Tellers are very excited about that. In addition, the biggest expansion in comics distribution in a generation is going to happen. DC Comics is going to sell four exclusive titles in Walmart. These titles are going to be offered in over 3,000 Walmart stores across the country. Currently, Walmart doesn't carry comics and is one of the largest retailers in the United States. So what better place to try to throw some books and try to get some additional readers? These new comics are going to be based around some of the more popular people in DC, such as Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, etc. And they're going to be 100 page comics priced at $4.99 each. Now the hope is that people will pick these up and read them and go pick up some other titles in their local comic book store. And in a multi-decade policy change, Diamond Comic Distributors are going to allow wholesalers to sell comics in retail stores. This will be done by giving retailers the opportunity to purchase a 44 pocket comic spinner rack. Well, see, I'm excited about this, and for me to explain why, I need to give you a little background about young little Marty. See, when I was growing up, I didn't have local comic book stores around, but I was very interested in getting and reading comics. And one of the best ways to do that was to go in places like 7-Eleven, where they had these comic spinner racks. I remember going in there with my mom and dad. I would go to the slushy machine and get me a slushy, then go back to the comic rack and spin it a few times and pick out a couple titles, and they would get them for me, and I'd go back home and start reading them. Go back the next month and pick up the next copy, and, and and that's how my love of comics grew. So there's a very sentimental attachment to these spinner racks. So I think it'd be really cool to walk into places like 7-Eleven or other retailers that don't normally sell comics and see these spinner racks again. All in all, I do help with all these new ways of getting comics into people's hands that the comic industry will start growing again because it's a fantastic art form and there's a lot of great stories that I'd still like to hear about. Finally, in a follow-up to my segment about Solo, a Star Wars movie, and how it didn't do so well in the theaters, Luke Films has decided to stop production and any more movement on two of their films, including Boba Fett and a standalone Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. They've decided instead they want to focus on episode 9 of the current trilogy and look at the upcoming trilogy. Now, a lot of people may be bummed out about this, but as a Star Wars fan, I'm excited. I'm excited to see that they know that, okay, we just can't slap Star Wars title on a movie, put it out there, and it's going to do well. We, as Star Wars fans, want some good, solid movies. So, them taking time time to kind to reset themselves and look at what happened with the past couple movies and how they can make it better, I think is going to be better for, for all of us who are really into that franchise. And now for this episode's interesting fact. Chainsaws were invented for the aid in childbirth. Look, I'm not here to explain these things. I just give you the facts and then you can do your own research. If you enjoyed this episode, please let me know by subscribing to this channel and make sure to follow our podcast, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, at Roll Dice Take Names, or you will see the episodes posted here in this channel. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Dice and Names. We have a Facebook page and a BGG Guild at 1589. I've been Marty. These have been my musings, and I am out.